Next we'll talk about consecutive integers. Consecutive integers are simply integers in counting order. So for example, the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. They're in order. So these are consecutive, and that's what the word consecutive means, just one after the other. Now we also need to talk about even and odd numbers. A number is even if it is a multiple of two. So let's write that in the notes. A number is even if it is a multiple of two. And the, the, the easiest way to tell is simply to look at the last digit. Remember this rule. If the last digit is even, then the number is even. If the last digit is even, the number is even. So the number 2,586,314 is even because the last digit is a 4 and that's an even digit. And an, uh, an integer is said to be odd if it is not a multiple of 2. An odd number is not a multiple of 2. And again we look at the last digit. If the last digit of a number is odd then the number is odd. If the last digit is odd, the number is odd. So the number 4,853 has a last digit of 3, and that's an odd number, so the number is odd. And you probably already knew that, but we just put all this in for the sake of being complete. And you should understand that counting by twos Okay, counting by twos always results in what we would call consecutive even integers. Consecutive even integers like this, 6, 8, 10, and so on. If you start with an even number and count by twos, then every single number in your list is even. We call those consecutive even integers, or, I'll put or here, or consecutive odd integers. Consecutive odd, odd integers, something like this, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. If you start with an odd number and count by twos, then every number in the list is odd. And next we'll look at some example problems that deal with these ideas, consecutive integers. Okay, the first example here, write an equation that states that four consecutive integers add up to 86. Okay, watch this. Four consecutive integers would be this. I'll call the first one n. Well, the next one will have to be n plus 1. And then the one after that would have to be n plus 2. And the one after that would have to be n plus 3. So these four things, if n is an integer, then n plus 1 is the next one, n plus 2 is the one after that, and n plus 3 is the one after that. So those four things are four consecutive integers. And we're told to write an equation that says that these four things add up to 86. So let's add these up. n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3, those all add up to 86. And that's our answer. We're not told to find a number for n. Um, we could we could solve this problem and find a number for n, and later we'll learn how to solve problems like this. There are some techniques that make solving problems like this fairly easy and straightforward. But we're not told to find the number for n, we're just told to write the equation. And being able to go from this mathematical concept expressed in words to this mathematical concept expressed as an, an equation. That's important, being able to translate from the English words into a mathematical equation, and that's what we're doing here. And in this particular case, it uses this concept of consecutive integers. 
So this says that these four consecutive integers add up to 86. Now this could be written like this, n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3 equals, whoops, I deleted the 6 there, equals 86. That would be fine. You don't have to have the parentheses. The parentheses here, though, do make it clear that we have four specific things. This plus this plus this plus this. So conceptually with the parentheses, it just matches our English statement of the problem a little bit, a little bit more closely. But writing it like this is perfectly acceptable. Okay, next example. Write an equation that says that the product of two consecutive integers is 42. Okay, we could use any, any variable. It's very common to use n. Think the letter n stands for number, but we could use any variable. So I'll, ju I'll just use an x here x is one number, so the next number would have to be x plus 1. x is one integer, x plus 1 is the next integer. And we're talking about the product of two consecutive integers. So this will have to be x times x plus 1, and we're told that it's 42. And that's our answer. Again, we're not told to find a number for x, we're just told to write the equation. And this equation says that two consecutive integers have a product that's 42. So I take those two consecutive integers, one number and the next one, multiply them together, and that has to equal 42. Again, we'll learn how to solve equations like this, how to find what number for x really makes this true. But right now we're just trying to get from this statement in English to this mathematical equation. Okay, one more. Write a mathematical equation that says that four consecutive integers add up to 20 more than the smallest. So four consecutive integers added up. So this will be n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3. We don't go out to 4, n plus 4, even though it says 4 here. This is the fourth one. See, this was the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Four consecutive integers add up to, so these are all going to add up to equal, 20 more than the smallest. Well, out of, out of these four numbers, clearly this one is the smallest. So n is the smallest of those four, so 20 more than the smallest would be n plus 20. So that is our answer. Four consecutive integers add up, I'm adding them together, and they add up to equal 20 more than the smallest.